Hello, Santo. Hey, how are you, brother? How are you? Very good, thanks. Uh, are you doing? Uh, are you cold? The, you Very know, cold. I just, took, I just took my beautiful um, woolen uh, scarf off. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So today, um, I, I don't want, I don't have to introduce a famous astrologer Santos Bonacci again with us, uh, and we. Um, prepare today some material for uh, for the people uh, not on, only in Poland uh, about some uh, information about some some knowledge what was very unique that, that's important that this this kind of knowledge uh, uh, is so important because today <clears throat> we're going to the maybe Aquarius age which is connected with a lot of information Aquarius is connected with Wi-Fi information connection but this is not important the qu quantity the important is quality and how to connect this information because we we have millions of informations but if we won't be able to connect the puzzles then uh, we, we we won't sort it out the the mysterious of the world what do you think uh, santo about this yeah Yep, very true. Uh, knowledge is suppressed, true knowledge. It always has been. Mm. So this is why Plato said, hard and difficult it is to attain this knowledge of the truth, difficult and dangerous it is to publish this knowledge. Yeah. So I found that as well, and it's very patent and observable today in the world, all around with censorship, and a new kind of book burning and uh, opinion checking, you know, and um, thought monitoring. So, but the true knowledge is there, brother. The true knowledge is called syncretism. Even the name, secretism, from the secret, <laughs> come from. But you said very important things that is dangerous. The knowledge is dangerous as we everybody who who know a bit history uh, how 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 uh, the system uh, killed people uh, on uh, in the name of of the god uh, but actually the, the the true meaning was that people with knowledge uh, even in in the bible there was a sentence like jehovah said be careful about how they are especially for this who telling the truth <laughs> so this is Yep, truth telling. It's very dangerous because <clears throat> for empire to exist, truth must not persist. So they have to persecute the truth of sovereignty and the truth of uh, philosophy. Philosophy means to love wisdom. Hence, I would describe myself as a philosopher. So if to sum up who I am and what I do and the truth path that I'm on, mm -hmm. it's philosopher. So when you assume and, and take on the uh, philosopher life, uh, you become a Christ. And this is what Jesus teaches. Jesus teaches two things, how to free yourself from Rome, how to be a king and a priest, yeah, and so uh, would you explain what design? <clears throat> there is a lot of pictures what Jesus Christ shows on the heart. This is uh, quite important, but not many people knows what this really means. Uh, the Taurus uh, mm, as a heart, uh, the two energies. Uh, why is so important, and what design means as the Jesus Christ shows on uh, on the heart. First of all, uh, Christ and Jesus must be separated. They are not the same thing. Um, the Father and the Son, <clears throat> it's, it's, the, it's the difference between the Father and the Son, the Spirit and the Son. Yes, yes. They are one, as it says in Scripture, I and the Father are one, mm -hmm. but they are uh, in, individually separate when you understand their function. So... Christ is in reference to the spirit. Christ is the halo up here. Jesus of the sacred heart 
is pointing to the soul. So the crown chakra and, and the aura, the halo that comes from the crown chakra is the Christ. It's the spirit of in you. As it says in Colossians 1.27, the Christ in you. Whereas Jesus pointing always to the heart, it's not Christ pointing to the heart. People are confused. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus because the heart is the core, the cur, the cardiac. And the core, the apple core, the apple is the torus field around our body. It's the torso torus field. And so it's centered in here, the soul. The soul is sevenfold. It's the seven chakras. So the spirit is one, or it always is one. It's the Christ. It's the father. I and the father are one. The soul are all connected. See, they all are summed up in the crown chakra, uh, the seventh chronos, crown chakra. So, it, and this is the lamb of God standing upon Mount Zion uh, because Aries, astronomically and astrologically speaking, Aries the ram is the cerebram. Mm -hmm. Taurus the bull is the cerebellum, the bullum. Mm -hmm. And descending, going through, from starting from Aries, the first sign, number one, then Taurus, the bull, the neck, the cerebellum, the small brain. Mm -hmm. Then comes the twins, Gemini. The twin lungs. Mm -hmm. The breath, Adam. And going down the body, cancer, the chest, Leo, the heart. And you come to the heart and, the, and Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, is in the heart. He's pointing to the heart. He is the lion. Leo yeah, is Leo in the heart. Is, yeah, the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in Revelation, when it teaches you how to descend and become a priest and a king, but mostly how to be a priest, you must ascend Jacob's ladder, the seven chakras. And it says in Revelation, only the lion and the lamb which was slain, the crown chakra and the heart chakra. This is why Jesus points to his heart and he points above. Mm -hmm. Because through the heart, you go up to heaven, to the crown chakra. This is the head, heaven heaved up. All the thinking goes on here, down at the feet and down at the bowels, all of the excretory, eliminatory and worldly things. This is called Gehenna and Sodom and Gomorrah. The, the bottom chakra is called Sodom. Ah, so we, now we start to understand our scriptures. So inside of you, there is hell below, hence your heel, hell, the sole of your foot. And, and that's how you heal your soul, by walking on your heels and your souls, by the way, grounding. And Aries is the Lamb of God in heaven. So all of the good stuff, the holy cow, Taurus, and the Lamb of God, Aries, are in the head. And they are the bald animals and they teach you how to walk and they illuminate your path. Hence in Proverbs, it says, the Lord lightens up my road. It's the Lord, Aries, the Lamb of God, fire. And Krishna, the bull of God, he's always, he's the cow herd and Jesus is the shepherd, shepherding his flocks. And so <clears throat> what it says in Revelation is only the lamb and the lion were worthy to open the seven seals. Because you can't open the seven seals in the solar plexus. That is Gehenna, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's down dealing with power, success, survival, sex of the physical kind, of the lustful kind, mostly. 
because sex happens in all the chakras. Mm -hmm. So if those bottom chakras colored appropriately, yellow, orange, red, are redshift. The torso, Taurus field, is redshift down below. Okay, and the menstruation is a sign of the red chakra, at the bottom of the torso. And the blue chakra, blue shift, is always at the top. Heaven is blue. Yeah. See, the crown, the heart chakra is green. That's the plane of the earth that we live on. Mm -hmm. And when we look up, we see a blue sky. This is, this is the heaven that leads us to the dome of God, the, head, the high heavens. Because this blue chakra is the low heavens, the heavens of the torso. And, and this is the, another dome. It's called the abdomen. So the abdomen, which has your 24 thoracic bones, just above the lumbar. Lumbar means tree, the tree of life in your body. 33 pillars leading up to head heaven, to the pineal gland. So the abdomen is capped off at blue. When you look up, you see a dome, the blue sky. And that's the abdomen of God. But beyond that, you can go through the portal into heaven where the indigo and violet chakra is. And that's the Lamb of God dressed in purple, Aries, who stands upon Mount Zion singing a new song with 144,000. Oh, well, if that's not a clue. And what clue would that be? Well, when you analyze the seven chakras electrically on the electromagnetic spectrum, you will find that the bottom chakra has four petals. It's red and it has four petals swirling around its torus field. The orange chakra just above has six. That's sex, the sacral, the sexual chakra, six. Six means sex. In fact, in Latin, that's how you say six sex the solar plexus has 10 because that's man in control with his 10 fingers it's power the heart oh. chakra has 12 that's why jesus with his 12 disciples and 12 apostles is pointing to his heart because it has 12 green petals this chakra has 16, 16 is seven, and 16 is the number of the chant, Hare Krishna, 16 words. 16 is also sweet 16. Oh, I can go on, the list of 16 and its power, it's here, the blue chakra. Then here, 96 petals, the third eye, the Jupiterian chakra. And when you add all those numbers together, it comes to 144. Then the seventh chakra has a, a thousand petals. It's very complicated, that violet, mm -hmm. hazy, very high frequency color, which is the last of the visible colors. Beyond that is white. Mm -hmm. And so when you multiply a thousand, the thousand petal lotus by 144, you have 144,000 standing upon Mount Zion. Mount Zion is a mountain. It's a tree, the tree, the lumbar tree of your um, spinal column. And so that's why Jesus gets crucified at 33. That's where the 33rd spinal bone comes on the atlas holding the head the, of the heavens, the dome of the heavens. So <clears throat> what the scriptures teach us, people uh, fail to penetrate the depth of the scriptures and therefore they misunderstand them, especially when they take them literally, historically, literally. It appears to have a historical uh, nature to it because it borrows from history but it's not historical all scripture is literary it's mythology because it's only in mythology that you can carry 
the most truth. If you wanted to tell truth just literally, it would take more than the Bible. <laughs> As Jesus says in the gospel, it says, it says uh, about Jesus that if every word that he preached were written, it, the pages would fill the high heaven. So in order to condense all of the wisdom that we need, we once wrote scriptures and bequeathed them to further dark ages coming down the tunnel of time so that as we go through the Iron Ages and the Kali Yugas and we lose our consciousness down to 25%, 50 in the bronze, 75% in the silver, 100% in the golden age. See the book of Daniel and the vision of the, the image of Nebuchadnezzar with the gold head and the silver chest and the bronze uh, torso and legs and then the iron feet. These are the ages. All scripture acknowledge, acknowledge these ages. And so when we remember what the scriptures really mean and we penetrate and understand their true significance, then we see what the scriptures were uh, protecting and guarding through the dark ages. And many were persecuted for understanding the scriptures and preaching them, including Plato, including pagans, Christians. So everyone's been persecuted for spreading wisdom. It, it's not a Christian thing. <laughs> it's the oh, Jews, uh, Islam, everyone gets persecuted. So. Yes, yes. Actually, the, it seems that the culture in ancient world was actually connected every continent every culture <clears throat> had they had very similar knowledge what we see today that they are separated that, that never been connected but but it seems like we we talked in previous interview uh, one year ago that in all europe <clears throat> the the year start 21st of march as a new beginning this is the that was the uh, cycles connected to astrology also astronomy and that, that that was natural that was based on on the on the nature that the nature start when when the plants grows <clears throat> the life starts but they changed uh, for for winter like the bears sleeping so this is the time that when the nature is sleeping actually this is not this is against the nature to start first of january as a new new year but even in the names uh, sub, september sapta october act which is seven, eight, nine, and deca, December 10. Like in criminology, you see that the, uh, this is the uh, proof that the calendar was changed because the, uh, the last uh, month, August, uh, it was changed from 6th to, to August. And then September, October, November, December is not changed. This is the calculation. This is the number of the month, a real month, what was before. And in Celt, in Celtic culture and Slavic culture, and <clears throat> all Europe was connected. Even, even uh, as we talk, Halloween and uh, connected 31st of October, which is only one day different in Slavic culture. It's first of first uh, of November. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, the day when the um, uh, when the people going on the graves uh, to re remind uh, the uh, ancestors. Yeah, like yeah, we like this. We this, used to. Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, you finish. Uh, what 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 does mean that if the culture was connected, and the knowledge should be there, and as you said before, uh, for many many years, uh, organization um, tried to destroy this knowledge. Even even in Chinese in Chinese scripts was written that. Uh, uh, in Europe also that uh, people who teach history uh, that, that should be punished and some people afraid and some some of the scripts and books they hide in the grave <clears throat> some of the uh, scripts they found in the grave uh, because of that situation we could have some uh, we could get this knowledge uh, from the past in mythology uh, through different different way so this puzzle we can connect 
but but uh, based on the real teaching at school that's impossible because they uh, try to teach only one plane which is they they don't connect the words meaning of the words they don't they don't know nothing about they don't teach children about influence of the planet how the nature <laughs> works why sun is connected with leo one one th this is vibration also in colors colors also connected connected like you said in the frequency of of the zodiac frequency of each sign are also connected to to the to the colors uh, and this is all all one actually because the holistics uh, it should takes it should it should connect the frequency of the color light uh, sound uh, of course and all is all is connected that's for that's for sure what do you think about this uh, santo yeah yes brother uh the the knowledge that was lost is the knowledge of the twelveness of energy and this was carried through the the zodiac astrological teaching every ecliptic every wave whether it's a thought wave emotion wave water wave uh sound wave light wave it all begins and has an end and then repeats it's yeah. cyclical and it's represented as a as a uh, frequency okay so where it starts is always in the center and then it, and then what happens is at the same time as it goes up and then back to the center and then down again the opposite is happening but we depict it as a sine wave. We go up to the Tropic of Cancer, mm -hmm. down back to the equator, down to the Tropic of Cancer, and back to the middle. And the secret is in knowing about the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn mm -hmm. down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And this is, the sun shows you this every year, Cancer. In fact, it's coming. Today is the uh, 19th of June. After tomorrow, it will, the sun will be at the solstice. So it's gone up to the Tropic of Cancer. Cancer yeah. begin, ushers in the summer, the crab. And the sun has to wane like a crab all the way down to the goat, Tropic of Capricorn. And then the goat climbs all the way back up like the, um, the scarabus, which is the, another way of saying scarab, the crab of the crab. Cancer. Yes. Ancient symbol of Egyptian, yeah? Yep, the dung worm, who the scarabus, he climbs all the way up to the Tropic of Cancer, then he's depicted as a scarab, a crab, mm -hmm. and then it has to wane. So in two days' time, the sun will then begin to wane. The summer will come, and then it hits the equinox of September 23rd. Remember that day? That's the equinox, Judgment Day, Yom Judgment Kippur. Day. Rosh Hashanah, the temple, the uh, festival of tabernacles, of tents, Libra, Tishri, the judgment of God, judgment day, and then the fall, the sun falls all the way down to Christmas where it's crucified at Christmas. Yes. So, so when you study the ecliptic and you see all of these festivities on the ecliptic and you see how the sun goes up to summer and down to winter, Cancer, Capricorn, Can and you see this, you begin to understand, aha, well, energy might not just be two things, positive, negative, white, black, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We could name thousands ad infinitum of dualities. Right. Yes, you could be simplistic and we could say that every, all energy is a vibration and it is, you know, duality, the devil. <laughs> Everyone's afraid of duality. There's so many, it's so scary. In fact, Pythagoras spat on the ground at the number two when his disciples mentioned two. Pa! Two. Pa! <laughs> yeah. Don't like Monday. You remind me this song, I don't like Monday. Number two. <laughs> yep. So that's per perhaps why we say, well, I'm, off I'm going to the toilet to do number twos. So, um, because um, the duality God, the Demiurge, was seen as an abortion, as a blasphemy, this 
physical creation of red shift, blue shift. You know, it was the pits of hell because in higher realms, it is more bliss. In the physical realm, there is only suffering because it's duality. So, so this Tunis um, is how God, the one, the monad, monad being an anagram for Adam and atom, the unit, becomes the dyad God, the God of creation, red shift, blue shift. And so, and this is the creator. So, uh, what this world produces can only be seen from uh, that perspective with the physical eyes. That's why we have two eyes, because to to understand the three D world of of the dyad God. Uh, and so, the Godhead expresses like this from one to two to a trinity to a tetrad which is called the tetragrammaton or the tetrahedron sorry did you say something uh, actually the as you said that everybody everything repeats uh, so today we are kind of age like kali yuga age or dark age or actually where is no sun connected with knowledge. Sun always was connected with, with, with light and light was connected with knowledge. So if we today live in the kind of age like uh, everybody thinks that they are high civilization, but actually it's opposite. <clears throat> uh, so what do you think? Uh, so, where are we going? Where, where, this, uh, where are we going? Which way? I know that uh, um, we moving to the Aquarius uh, uh, 11th house, uh, which is connected actually with, with knowledge of Wi-Fi and all this uh, communication as we see today. Uh, but in your opinion, um, the balance should be, I think the balance should be important, like in every age actually. But what, what do you think, what do you expect in the close future? Where, where the people go in this, uh, which way they, they will go? Because I see many people waking up as you, Personally, you can say how people, how many people are interested in the ancient knowledge also. So this is one of the symptoms that we're going actually this way to the way of Aquarius because Aquarius is connected with knowledge and waking up. Yes, yes. This is the baptism of, of spirit and fire that uh, John the Baptist spoke of. John the Baptist said, the one coming shall baptize in spirit, pnevnuma, air the air element, spiritual, mental. And then beyond that is the fire baptism. So Aquarius is baptizing with the waters of truth in an air sign. It's fixed air. Yeah. And this is man, the mental man, which will be baptized. Pisces baptized us in water. It was the first baptism. From water, you progress to air. You see, from a liquidarian, you become breatharian. And from eating solids, you become liquidary, you see? But then your food shall, shall be fire. This is why Jesus says, I have food which is not from this realm. Mm. My food is to do the will of my father. And so it's, it's a fire element. So where are people going? They're waking up and they're going to, they're going to learn how nature works as a twelveness, not yeah. a two-ness. Mm. That's why the two-ness was spat at by... Pythagoras, not because it was evil, but because people are stuck there. When you, when you begin to see that a wave always starts at Aries, goes up Taurus, Gemini, hits the Tropic of Cancer, mm -hmm. then begins Cancer, Leo, Virgo, and that's the top 180 degree half of the summer part of the year. And then on the 23rd of September, the autumnal equinox, begins the winter signs. Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, the fall. And there is Sagittarius with his arrow, bang. He hits the sun on the heel on the 21st of December, the last day of Sagittarius. The arrow is there telling you the solstice, the wave amplitude, the tropic of cancer, the mm -hmm. sacrifice of the goat, the sacrificial goat, Christmas, Light up the little trees in winter 
and put lights on them because the lights will come back as Lent comes along and brings the Lamb of God, the Passover into the Lamb, the equinox. Equinox being pa Passover being Easter. Every year in Aries because the sun goes from Capricorn, climbs up to Aries and then spring begins. Capricorn, Ashton, winter. Mm, no food. We want spring, the blossom. Yeah. And we want cancer in two days' time, the summer, the crops. Leo burns the fruit on the vine, the wine. And you see, Virgo is the harvest season. And then Libra is where the, the grapes that grew under Leo and harvested in Virgo are pressed on the wine press of the scales of Libra. And then you see Jesus with his 12 disciples on the table and he's spreading out bread and wine because Virgo gives the bread and Libra brings the wine. So there's Jesus in the middle of the, equi the ecliptic, the sine wave. He's got six disciples on his right, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Virgo, Leo, Virgo. And there he is, Virgo is right next to him, that virgin. That's why Cancer's pointing to Virgo's throat. He's saying, mm, no Adam's apple, Jesus. This is a virgin to your right. And then you see to his left, you see a green disciple. Leonardo da Vinci paints a green disciple with his arms outstretched, just like the scales of Libra, green, Venus. Green Venus, there it is. Two girls, one to his left, one to his right. Nice. Because Venus rules Libra. And there it is with her arms extended, just to show you the scales, you know. And, and, and then Snowden, this guy who uh, passed uh, information from the NSA, CIA, uh, the, the, um, about this, uh, you know, the, the subject with the phones. And uh, uh, so he had the moon in Libra, moon in Libra. Do you think it's a connection with justice and his uh, um, mentality that it should be said to the people that something wrong is happening? With who? Edward whom? Snowden. Edward Snowden. Oh, yeah. He's, he's got a, a moon one, in... Um, one Libra, yeah. Libra. Well, sun, moon, ascendant, all of these will, will cause the individual to be inclined towards justice. Uh, if your moon is in Libra, you will react in justice. Uh, in, um, yeah, in justice. If your sun is in Libra, you will act in justice. If your ascendant is in Libra, you will make it your life's ambition to be just and to... Yes, and uh, like, a, like a lawyer or... But there is another guy from Wikileaks uh, who helped Edward Snowden. He also had moon, moon in Libra. That, that's connection. Mm -hmm. I forgot his name. Uh, this Australian guy from Wikileaks. Julian, Julian Sanch. Julian Sanch, yes, yes. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, a lot of lawyers are Librans. I, um, when I was a street performer, uh, I'd speak to lawyers who often would have a break in the city where I played and stop and listen to my music and then buy a CD or whatever, and I'd talk to them. And as soon as I found out they were lawyers, I would ask uh, whether they, their astrology and... Um, Pretty much 60, 70% of the time, it was Librans. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, so this is why uh, you see the blindfolded Venus with the scales of Libra, because she's the ruler of Libra. And <clears throat> those scales represent the justice and the judgment of the sign of Libra on the 23rd of September. Because there the sun is judged at the equinox, standing between 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night. And it's in the middle of the ecliptic at 180 degrees. That's its position. Mm -hmm. And so that's why she stands blindfolded. And with those scales, that's Venus above the courtroom. Because there, those, those are the symbols of justice. Um, because when you're blind, you don't see the bribe you you listen and you make the correct judgment and you weigh the truth in the scales so 
also in the Egyptian motif where uh, the dead go into a mentet, the underworld, and you see the scales and your heart is weighed against a feather, which are the same word, mm -hmm. anagrams of each other, heart, feather. And so if your heart is heavier than the feather, well, there's only one saviour that can help you from hell. That's the son of God, Horus, the son of Osiris, or Jesus, in other words. Remember, Jesus is always the son. Christ is the father. Okay, so... Uh, That's why we had the hour in our clock, uh, like, yeah, yeah Horus. Yeah, Horus. And Horus. so just let me finish on that then. Um, those scales of justice, they are there as the seventh sign of the ecliptic, of the zodiac, uh, because it's the middle of every sine wave. Hence, appropriately, it's, it's, it's signaling that position of Libra. All, all the, the signs of the zodiac are perfectly positioned along the ecliptic. The first is a ram. Hence, you get a ramp when you start to make a sine wave because the ram, and astronomers will teach you that it, when you're looking up your coordinates at the sky, at the constellations, they'll teach you that you always start at zero degrees right ascension of meridian, Aries. Right at the start of Aries, an astronomer, not an astrologer, will tell you the ecliptic begins at zero degrees, R-A-M, RAM, right ascension of meridian, right ascension, R-A, Ra, the sun god. You see, you see why these words come to us? Ra means right ascension because the sun only mm -hmm. right ascends. All the, other plan all the other planets, the six other planets, the moon, Jupiter, sun, um, Venus, Saturn, Mercury, Mars, they all ride ascend as well on the ecliptic, but they decline or declinate, I should say. They can, they can uh, declinate, you know, positive above the plane of the sun, and they can be negative declination. But the sun cannot decline because he is the boss of the ecliptic. That's the trajectory that the sun makes yearly, going from Capricorn, low in the sky, up to Cancer, high in the sky. Mm -hmm. It's opposite here where I live. Capricorn is very, very high, and Cancer right now is very, very low. The sun is making a very small arc in the sky in Queensland, where I live. So it's opposite, because see, we're on the outer side of the Earth. So, so when you understand it, the, then the next sign is the bull, the middle of spring. You see, and it has a frequency. There are 12 frequencies along that ecliptic. And the 12 signs teach you the 12 frequencies of every wave. And in church, they tell you that it's, this, it's the devil. Astrology is the sign of the devil. This is why I lost this wisdom, you see. So what happens is you have 12. And, and that's obvious. There are 12 musical notes. There are 12 full spectrum colors along the electromagnetic. Um, the rainbow has seven in them, but if you, if you uh, put the, the spectrum and, and spread it out more, there are 12 to make the complete. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, 12, and 12 is in everything. The dodecahedron, which is the ether uh, tetrahedron, um, polyhedra and so dodeca means 12 carbon the universe is made of carbon well it's not just carbon it's carbon 12 it's the isotope of carbon it's 12 mm -hmm. and, and it's 99.99999 percent of everything that is solid is carbon 12 and carbon 12 is able to construct with its properties the physical material world through the dodecahedron which is the polyhedra of the ether hence we get words like ethernet yeah that's the same ether that 
Einstein said doesn't exist. That's fairy talk, you know. Uh, and and whereas Tesla only acknowledged the ether, yeah. Marconi, Marconi. Luigi Gina, they all work with the ether. All the real geniuses, the ones who invented stuff, Einstein didn't invent anything except no, the stupidity. No, the, of course, of course, yes. You can imagine that over hundred years this technology was blocked. Uh, carefully was blocked in every continent, uh, electric cars, uh, uh, Wi-Fi. We, we, <coughs> we could have this 100 years ago. Uh, technology, what, what we can use in both ways, actually. Yeah? But today, what, what they uh, increase the frequency of, like in Europe, 5G, uh, <coughs> Wi-Fi connection, mobile phone uh, connection, this, this frequency, uh, it's uh, quite dangerous for our body because they are very close to microwave which cooks our brains so and our cells of course uh, so the mm, mm, how to say uh, everything is good but med it should be med which is the uh, in the middle everything in the middle balance yeah? but this is not balance because the corporation CEO force us to believe this is everything good because they preparing the documents, all standard uh, documentation certificate that everything is safe, but we know how, how it is, of course. Yeah, yeah. Samson, sure. can, would you tell a bit, uh, this is connected to, to the, this, what you said, as we, some people think, um, asking question one of the, each other, why I love, I like a red color, red t-shirt, why I like a blue, uh, why some people go into the um, uh, beauty sector to work. Uh, they, they don't know really, but uh, this is everything. This is always connected uh, with designs, with the frequency, what they vibrate. Uh, some people want to go to the beauty sector because they have this Taurus uh, influence. Of course, Taurus is always smell, a few fragrances, yeah, beauty. Uh, Venus, Venus actually rules, yeah. Uh, so that's, a, that's why another way, uh, another design is uh, connected to different profession and colors. And um, so, would you say this is also connected to to, to the body parts in the, in our body and the medicine, uh, medical astrology? Uh, so, um, would you say a bit more about the uh, illness is connected to uh, to design uh, um, emotionally. For example, like the lion is proud, uh, and he he's, uh, uh, he he can also be sick uh, be, because uh, he can get this proud enough. Or, or or for example, the minerals connected to how they losing this kind of minerals connected to each sign. Uh, so the, the part of the body can be sick or can cause illnesses. Well, that's good. That's um, uh, very true. Uh, Schussler, a German physician in the 1800s, uh, discovered by examining the remains, cremated remains of humans and animals, that they consisted of 12 fundamental salts. And... Um, so when we go to the uh, chemist drugstore to get uh, Schussler cell salts, there are 12 of them. Uh, this goes back to this physician. And then <clears throat> years later, a man by the name of George Carey, an astrologer, used the 12 salts astrologically to heal people. And so he discovered that the frequency of Aries corresponds with potassium phosphate. The frequency of Taurus, sodium sulfate. Gemini, potassium chloride. Cancer, calcium fluoride. Leo, magnesium phosphate. Virgo, potassium sulfate. Libra, sodium phosphate. Scorpio, calcium sulfate. Sagittarius, silica, Capricorn, calcium phosphate, Aquarius, sodium chloride, Pisces, iron phosphate. 
And so what he did was he administered three of those salts to each patient. For someone like me, Aries, he would give the Aries salt and the two following signs, Taurus and Gemini. So potassium phosphate, sodium sulfate, potassium chloride. And what he found was they improved in all of their symptoms just by taking those three salts because he discovered that nine of the salts in a normal period of nine month gestation uh, was enough to uh, provide fully only the nine salts of the ecliptic during the gestation period because the infant, the, the um, fetus was able to draw this from the body of its mother. Whereas after birth, uh, it was not able to do so. And the foods that we were consuming did not have those specific frequencies. So he found that by administering three salts, depending on the uh, gestation period, if one was uh, premature, then you'd add uh, accordingly. So I also have uh, produced um, presentations on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Mr. Astro Theology, dealing with this subject and how to administer these salts, uh, especially those three. And of course, you can find through astrology, by doing medical astrology, you can find other weaknesses and other salts which would be deficient. And I've had success with this as well. And how you do this is you find uh, places in the chart, in the circle of the astrological chart, which represents the ecliptic, the full circle of 12 energies in the, in the body. And you'll find that if certain planets don't do well in certain signs, for instance, Mars in Libra, not very good for the kidneys, uh, inflammation of the kidneys. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you find things like that, you could administer that, that salt. So if someone had uh, an Aryan like me had uh, Mars in Libra, I would see that and I would say, I think you should uh, take uh, potassium phosphate for your, li uh, your, your liver for general uh, health maintenance. Just, it will uh, Did you realize something balance. that you, when you lose, when you need uh, free following for Aries, uh, Taurus and Gemini, uh, did you discover that this mineral is connected to one part of your body or did you have some uh, example uh, on your on you actually that this this particular gemini for example which is a lot of people are very surprised that what has gemini connected to to your aries zodiac yeah but uh, why are you losing this uh, minerals uh, the free following and how this would be connected uh, in your body well because like i said before you're out of your mother's womb you you can't get it from the food so she's secure she can secure for the nine uh, month uh, nine minerals and the free following actually uh, it's 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 actually maybe there is some but uh, not enough no no it's 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 in the body that it um, gets this you see when oh, they cut the placenta yes, yes. Mm. when they cut the placenta they uh, stop this uh, process of of divining of of, oh. of deriving this um, frequency from from the body yeah mm -hmm. and uh and so i've had personal um uh, verification scientific verification that this is a true science um here where i live there is a practitioner who has a skyo machine s c i o i have been to her three times and what she does is she puts some um some electrical, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? The four electrical um, 
connectors, let's call it that, I'm just the words uh, slipping me right now, uh, two on your wrist, two on your shins, and one around your head. It's, an, it's a computer system that reads your body's energy and it goes through all the organs, it goes through the cells, mm -hmm. it, it reads, it gives you a biofeedback reading. And she, it, it, this Skyo program also runs the tissue salts on it. And she found that I was deficient in potassium phosphate, Aries, potassium chloride, Gemini, that was my second most deficient one. Uh -huh. potassium, <laughs> potassium phosphate was number one. And the third one was not actually Taurus. It was Pisces, iron phosphate, was the third most deficient. The fourth one, was sodium sulfate. Now, that when, when, when I saw that, when she told me that, she's got no idea of astrology. There's no idea that those salts belong to certain signs, according to George Kelly. But I did. And that really impressed me. That just made my heart beat, thinking, great. This scientific can be verifiable. <clears throat> yeah, it's scientific proof. As... As is because why? Because we're dealing with frequencies. When you understand the 12 different frequencies, the astrologers know them. That's why they attribute fire, air, water, earth to them. But because fire represents plasma, hmm. air represents gas, water represents the frequency of liquids, earth represents the frequency of solids. And so on every ecliptic, it starts cardinal fire, fixed earth, mutable air. Cardinal water, fixed fire, mm -hmm. mutable earth. Cardinal air, fixed water, mutable fire. Cardinal earth, fixed air, mutable water. Those are 12 different frequencies using three modalities, cardinal, fixed, mutable, i.e. birth, growth, decay, creator, preserver, destroyer. And this is how energy works. It, all energy starts, has a middle bit where it does some stuff and then decays and changes into another wave, another energy form on another octave. And so what astrologers are teaching is how to understand energy and the 12 frequencies of the musical chromatic scale. The first yes. note is yes. always Aries. Yes. The second note is always Taurus. Third, Gemini, etc. That's the so only the way. Note, some people all. say that the first note of Aries is C, uh, but th th that's for sure it's a red color. Uh, if the red color, we can find out what frequency is corresponding to the musical scale. Uh, do you think it's C or other? Sandro? Well, it could be. I, I would say Aries is C, but, um, uh, but that would have to be tested. I believe that the true uh, base tone of the universe is G. That's why the G is in the, um, the Freemasonic uh, number. It's the seventh letter and it's... Uh, and and it's actually the 33rd letter, the second time around the alphabet comes G is on the 33rd position. So those are the full degrees of seven, you know, the octave of seven around the alphabet. So G, uh, I was told by my friend, uh, Jagger Jagger, uh, um, Brendan Murray, the king of the Wawarun people, an Ar Aboriginal tribe here in Victoria, uh -huh. But he was taught by his um, teachers that G is the fundamental frequency of the uh, universe. So that could be, uh, it could be Aries, but this would have to be tested. I haven't done such tests, uh, but I have seen, I've seen probably be about four or five different versions yes, of yes. the 12 chromatic colours yes, along the ecliptic and in fact i have chosen one on my graphics if you go to my 
uh, website, you'll mm -hmm. see that I've got the 12 chromatic colours uh, along the 12 signs. In fact, I'll pull it out now and I'll show you. So if you wanted to comment, I'll just go, I'll go and grab that. Sure. Go on. Sorry? Yeah, go on. Did you want to comment? I'm listening. No, no, no. I just said, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. I said yeah. I wait. Well, okay, so this is my, uh, <clears throat> my graphic. It's too small. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so everything starts here at Aries. Okay. Yeah. And everything goes up to the Tropic of Cancer. That's where we are now. There's Cancer. Yeah. Sign of the Moon. And so this is the Tropic of Cancer. Here is the Tropic of Capricorn. Saturn. Blue. You see, and so what you have is Aries. I've got it, there you go. That would be the note C, possibly, I don't know. But I've seen this, these, these are the two, the true 12 colors. And so this is a- Where is Leo in the graphic, the Leo sign? Sorry? What is some Leo sign? Leo, the fifth. Yes, Leo is sometimes between the yellow and green. Yeah, like 520 heads, what shows the heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's between, I often see between uh, two colors, green and yellow. Yeah. It, it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, as you sorry. see, there's Aries, the cerebrum, the ram, the lamb of God. There's the symbol of the cerebrum, the glyph of Aries. See, ancient uh, scientists were teaching this true science here. This astrology is true science. This is how you do medical astrology. Uh -huh. And so you see uh, the small brain here, that's the bull, that's Taurus, the cerebellum, the cerebellum. And then we have Gemini, just before summer at the Tropic of Cancer. And now we're going to go through this period and see the body, there's the heel catcher, Jacob, Israel, the Zodiac, the Maseroth, uh, Job, yeah, Job 38, 32 in the Bible speaks to Job, God saying, do you know how to read the Maseroth? And you see the beautiful Jewish, uh, Nisan, Liar, Sivan, Tammuz. That's interesting. Yeah, that'd be Thomas, Thomas, the atom, mm -hmm. and right there in Cancer. So uh, you see those 12 months, again, corresponding to the 12 signs, the 12 systems of the body, Aries, the cerebrospinal, Taurus, the endocrine system, Gemini, the respiratory lung, Cancer, the lymphatic system, the immune system, Leo, the cardiovascular circulatory system, Virgo, the digestive system, Libra, the renal system, and urinary, Scorpio, the generative system, Sagittarius, muscular, Capricorn, skeletal, Aquarius, the 12 meridians, Pisces, the integumentary, the skin system. And so you see, the body is, knows this science. It's a 12-ness. And all the organs are tuned to the frequencies of these because there are only those 12 frequent frequencies in creation. And so you'll find that the seven planets with their elements, Saturn, lead, Sun, gold, Venus, copper, Jupiter, tin, Mars, iron, Mercury, quicksilver, moon, silver. They are all frequencies, as the great Walter Russell taught. There are no particles and there are no elements. They are all different rates. That's, that's, even, that's even useful for this graphic. Uh, it's very useful also. If somebody wants to use the diet and he doesn't know 
what kind of products uh, of the element uh, he should take. For example, the, the fire, he can see the red color, orange color, yellow color products. Uh, this kind of, he can, he doesn't need to know, have a table, but he can see visu visually, he can see the color of the products. And this is the element what he need. If he knows what element he need, then, then he can use this graph, he can see. Also with the minerals, as you, very interesting thing is, as you said, that this machine recognize element uh, tissue salt for, for, for your, because your eddies, uh, for your, for Pisces actually, because uh, you are on the border actually between Pisces and Aries. In Vedic astrology, you are Pisces uh, zodiac. Yeah. In the Western astrology, you are Aries. But anyway, uh, Mars in first house give you anyway the ability uh, typical for Aries. Uh, that's that's that sometimes it's seen that somebody is on the border it has also influence because there is no border first day you are clean areas yeah there's always some influences oh look um both systems for me are perfectly accurate and valid systems both tropical and sidereal i uh, i bow down to the wisdom of both schools and i understand them both uh very few astrologers do Either they are tropical and they denounce sidereal or they are sidereal and they de denounce tropical. And I believe they're making a great mistake because uh, tropical penetrates uh, the solid frequency more than um, sidereal. It's good for medical astrology also, yeah? Yeah, for the body. In fact, the presentation we are going to do tomorrow about how to um, identify um, for the... the uh, how to identify the the facial features you know i can do this i can do this uh myself i've, I've done it many times and it's only tropical that works mm -hmm. uh but that's because it penetrates the body it's it's the body science yeah, whereas sidereal is more the psychic it's it's um it's not penetrating the physical as well and but it's there there are two, there's a schizophrenic nature to humanity and the procession of the equinoxes has caused that. It's probably natural in, in the darker ages. Maybe it does balance out and we go back to just the one system. But when there is this uh, displacement, this procession or um, uh, falling back of the sun on the ecliptic, uh, it does cause this um, fraction, you know, this... Uh, uh, breaking away of the two personalities um, but when we do this uh, tomorrow we're, we're going to do this presentation we're going to see and give credit and validity to the tropical system mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I have explained on uh, the KRS channel in, from India uh, with Kapil, Kapil uh, did a, mm -hmm. a show explaining the difference between tropical and sidereal as there are, there is a tropical day and a sidereal day. There is a tropical year and a sidereal year. And when you understand the difference between the two and why they are happening with the true cosmology of a stationary earth and geocentric astrology, there is no heliocentric astrology, uh, Greg. Remember this, the astrologers out there who are Copernican, uh, are incorrect. Um, they are, they have been misled and they are false teachers, false prophets. Uh, astrology is geocentric and the earth is stationary. So they make a large mistake and they are the ones who are condemned in the Bible as false prophets because only true prophets uh, teach the geocentric stationary earth system, which I do. Not saying that I'm this great true prophet. I'm just saying that I'm an advocate for the true system, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I believe that uh, astrologers that have followed the Copernican revolution are misleading the masses and themselves, and they only bring disgrace to this science because they teach such things as the moon is a physical rock where planets go and land on and play golf and ring the President Nixon and say, uh, <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, great reception up here. Great uh, 5G towers, dude. We'll catch you when we fly back. There's more chances of a helicopter landing on the moon 
than that tinfoil Disney World production that they call the moon lunar module to get to the moon. You got more chances of getting up there with a kite or a helicopter. And and when you get there, you will fall through it because it's not physical. In fact, all the planets, including the sun and the moon, the luminaries, they are they're not even things, they are holes. H O L E hole that's a hole a portal you can shoot an arrow through that that it's a portal okay and that's what the sun is it's a hole in counter space and it is channeling counter space energy into space it's making space it is magnetism magnitude and so that's why it is the son of god because the Son of God is the Word of God, and the Word was made flesh. Doesn't mean one man, Jesus, was made flesh. <laughs> it means the Word, sound, om, which is what the Son produces when you listen to it. The sound of the Son was considered by most ancient religions as the most sacred sound of the universe. It is a sound that cannot be heard by the human ear because the human ear only hears between 20 and 20,000 hertz. The sound of the sun is much lower in frequency and also much higher in frequency than we can hear. Could the sound of the sun be part of the universal language system? NASA has recorded the actual sound of the sun in deep space and compress the inaudible waves so that human ears can hear it. If we listen to the sound we can hear and feel a deep vibration. The sound of the sun recorded by NASA is precisely as the ancient Hindus had described it in the Vedas thousands of years ago. It is a mantra that can be intoned with human speech as OM. In the 6th century BC, Pythagoras also heard the sound of the sun and described it as a deep resonant hum with higher frequencies blended into it. How did the ancient Hindus know this mantra if it could not be heard by the human ear? Could they have actually peered into the universal consciousness and perceived it? Uh, with the appropriate uh, t machinery equipment uh, that sun is a whole hence we get the son of god who is holy mm -hmm. and has a halo and is holy hallowed. Yeah. yeah yeah i know what you mean Complex. so all of these holy words have to do with holes and a hole is a wormhole and they tell you in quantum physics that there's wormholes yeah, well, as the great Pier Luigi Ghina, the Italian genius, said, the stars in the sky, they are holes. And as the Greeks said, Archimedes and Solon and all the great philosophers, the stars, they are like nails pinned to the dome of the heavens. But they are holy holes. And so scientists who attribute, you know, uh, density to them, and astrologers who go after these false scientists, these pseudo scientists, uh, these Copernicans, Newtonians, no, and Gal he, no, Copernicans, uh, he, he was the Jesuit, yeah, Jesuit. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, yeah, he was a Jesuit. This, this name, this for sure that we can't trust hundred percent of what they're saying because they manipulate. Uh, uh, we know this actually. You and me, that we, they, and many people actually, they manipulate history knowledge, uh, they're hiding, uh, burning many books and keeps for them 
to have influence for the nation's politics and actually all these new orders what they want to what they planning to do uh, that's, that's that's the kind of people that's why it's not accidentally uh, they build uh, astronomical uh, places in all over the world yeah yeah so copernicus he dedicated his book revolutions which there is no revolutions sorry galileo uh when he published that he he published it and d dedicated it to pope paul the third who was a came from the farnese house of farnese in english i'm italian so farnese now the farnese clan together with the borgia clan created the jesuits and the de medicis and the borghesis and all of those this, that's kind of uh, families big families what they uh, had also influence for countries in south america middle america and up today they have influences and even logos uh, very often you we can see uh, the as a, the designs yeah south america was their experiment they are plantations uh what did they call them um especially in Paraguay, they called these, uh, um, yeah, but they, they were social experiments. The Jesuits through the black nobility family who protect their, their assets, these, uh, you know, new world assets, that they are just corporations. So it's through the power that we give them in these corporations uh, from on the plantation that they rule the world. And the Vatican is just their, you know, uh, board of directors and um, their banksters, you know, that look after all of this transacting in commerce on oh, the yeah. maritime. You see, that's why the point of this show is how to become a king and a priest. When Jesus, the archetype for the king and the priest in the Gospels, teaches us lessons, they, they are generally how to become a sovereign. That's one Jesus. The other Jesus is the priest. The sovereign one is the one who walks on water. You see, when you walk on water, you are walking over maritime law. Maritime means, well, it's... Sea law. Um, yeah, it's admiralty law. It's uh, the law of, of waters, not of the land. And so Jesus coming out of the ship, the citizenship, mm -hmm. he decides to walk walk on water you see the citizenship is the birthright uh, is the um birth certificate and you see all the apostles they were sleeping in the hull of the ship because whoever has a birth certificate name and believes they are that name they are lost at sea uh non compass mentis. um Uh, there's a few other designations that they get which make them asleep. Hence, yeah. let, the slip, the dead, uh, let the dead bury the dead. So, walking on water, you see, when the Apostle Peter sees the Lord walking on water, he says, Lord, let me also walk on the waters. And Jesus turns around and says, Come. And Peter walks on the waters. And um, He's going all right for a while. And then all of a sudden he starts to sink in the water. You see? And Jesus says, this is because of little faith. Because many people, they want to be sovereign. And they want to escape the laws of, of Satan, of the uh, Kronos, Saturn, Kronos. Let, hang on, let me do this again. Satan, the God of this world. Saturn, the God of time, Kronos. And those who work for Satan are called the crown. Because only, only Satan wears the crown. Read Ovid. Read Pliny. Tacitus. And so, <clears throat> since Satan has, Satan has the crown, he is the, he, uh, the, he is the crown. And the agents who work for him, the crown, the bar, uh, they 
they do the work of the devil. And so when Jesus was brought into Pontius Pilate, he was asked a question. And what he did was he replied with another question. And so what he was teaching was that he was not of this jurisdiction. That's why he said, my kingdom is no part of this world. Sorry, dude, you can't judge me. Because he was grounded and he knew his sovereignty. And so that's why he said, I'm not of this jurisdiction. You can call me king of the Jews. You can label me. You can get false witnesses to come in and call me that I am your Roman citizen, but I'm not. I'm free. And so there are many of these, including when Jesus says, when the apostle says, Lord, because they tried to stumble him, shall we pay tax to Caesar? And knowing that whatever he says, he's going to get himself into hot trouble because there are people around who love the Romans and are agents for the Romans. And if he says, no, screw Caesar, stop paying your taxes, he's dead. They'll dob him in. They'll uh, inform on him and he'll be gone. Or if he says, yes, many of the Jews will become bitter. You know, many of the, uh, the followers of the Simon and all of those liberators of the Jews, the Maccabean spirit. So they were trying to trick him, you see. But Jesus replies, go to the ocean, Peter, or one of his disciples and pull out a fish and there will be a coin in that fish so it's very interesting a miracle inside of a miracle inside of a miracle <laughs> showing that no miracle actually took place it's, it's it's a teaching and what that teaching is is how to be sovereign you see give unto caesar what is caesar's that's a piece of metal you idiot it has no real value in the heavens where Moth and rust do not consume. And where the Lord says to treasure and store all your treasures, not here on earth where thieves come in the night and take it away. So he said, give unto Caesar what he Caesar's. It's useless, dude. And give unto God mm -hmm. what is God's. So he was teaching that there is God's law and there is Caesar's law. If you want to play in the commercial world, you will reap the consequences. If you want to do God. To the contract, we, we, we born, we didn't sign any contract. We, did, we never agree to accept the sea law. But, so they're using many tricks. Uh, this is kind of like computer game that you, you're just accepting these rules and, and they're using this. Using that mis there is no knowledge about this. If there's no knowledge, they can use it this and you accept this by the words, by the behavior, by, because everybody's do, <laughs> because everybody afraid consequences. So this is kind of tricks what sea law uh, falls uh, to, to other people, but this is against the human, human being, life being, this is against this because uh, this only support a big uh, corporation. Uh, or, isn't it? This is just well, yes, as long as the Vatican exists, corporate power will persist. Um, if we want to bring back God's law, which means anarchy basically, hence why in the Bible, uh, in the Bible, mm -hmm. it says, uh, I think it's the last book of Judges where it says, and the people of Israel had no judges and no king, and they did according to their hearts. Yeah. You see, when the Israelites demanded a king, they said, oh, the nations around us, they have a king. We want a king. Give us a king. Give us Saul. Give us David. Give us Solomon. And God says, well, I'll give you a king, but you should have stuck to me. I would have been better. But you want a king. I'll give you Saul. But remember, your sons will be sold as slave, and the king will want 10% of their labor and 10% of your man force and you will have to be subject to his laws and when a tyrant comes along you will have grief and he warned them 
We want a king. The nations have kings. And so what that means is that people demand for security to have positive law instead of natural law, universal law. And they want to sleep in the ship. Oh, there's a storm out. You know, we don't want to be walking. <laughs> yeah, but see, Jesus calmed the storm. Mm -hmm. why, did he, why did he calm the storm? Because the law of God irons out all the frivolous, harmful, prejudicious laws made by feeble mortal man. And so this is why the law of God was a shadow to the Christ. You see, the Christ, when it, a shadow is not reifiable. So a shadow of a tree, I mean, as the sun goes over, over the heavens, the shadow is moving. And so the shadow has no control of its own, of its own. It's not a thing. It can't get up and, and have its own life. When the sun comes up, the shadow appears. When the sun goes down, it's gone, it dies. It can't just in the night wander off and say, hey, I want to be my own thing. I'm sick of following this, <laughs> the sun every day. You know, I'm just sick of this. No, well, that's what the scriptures are teaching, that the law of God is a shadow of the Christ, meaning all these laws of Moses, sorry, not the law of God, the law of Moses, <clears throat> um, is the shadow until the, the law of Christ comes. Well, Christ is the law of consciousness, the higher consciousness. The law of Moses is the law of the soul, the passions of the soul, the heart, and the king, and whatever his frivolous uh, uh, laws may be, perjudicious to the health of humanity. Whereas God's law of the Christ, you see, you don't want the law of Moses, it's the shadow. You want the real thing, the tree. It's got substance. There's no substance in a shadow. And it has no um, principles, only attributes. And so this is why uh, when the Christ returns, consciousness will return. It won't be a physical man. The man is represented by Jesus because the man has a soul. But it's not one man. It's all men. The Christ who came was the consciousness that came uh, with the age of Pisces. It's uh, a special consciousness. Now is arriving a new consciousness, the consciousness of Aquarius. Yeah. You are a moon in Aquarius? No, in Vedic, yes, in Jyotish, but in uh, tropical, it's Pisces, moon in Pisces. Mm. And rising sign is Leo. So I have the sun at the very, very top in Aries, the moon at the very, very bottom, in the feet, Pisces, mm -hmm. and my ascendant sign is in the heart, in the middle. You see, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and the Fisher of men. And that's what I do. I'm a shepherd. I do all Aryan things. Aryans are the best shepherds. They look after their flock. They love and tender their flocks. And I love teaching. Leo, the Lion, the Ascendant, is the heart. You do it with your heart. And Pisces, the Fisher of men, is the one who walks about all day on the narrow and cramped road that leads to everlasting life. The philosopher, the lover of wisdom. Yeah. And so I, my astrology is perfectly in line with what I do. Aryan themes, shepherding, mm -hmm. being Arian, a good shepherd. Arian uh, rules adrenaline that they always quicker. Even if you talk, even moving eyes, everything is quicker than the people I see today. This. Yeah, that's why uh, the show we're going to do tomorrow about how to uh, tell the signs, mm -hmm. you can tell that my uh, body, head is Aryan. It, you yes, can tell. And curly hair. Curly hair. Oh, yeah. You can see it in the eyebrows. You can see it in the yes. iron around my yes. eyes. Mm -hmm. This nose, this long sheep nose, this um, very uh, defined um, iron-like features uh, and you can see Leo as well, my rising sign, because you mix the rising sign with the sun sign. Sometimes a little bit of the moon comes out too, but only when you have a strong moon in your chart. In other words, if it's in the first house, 
if it's angular, in the first, tenth, seventh, or fourth house. Then the moon will come. And if you're born at night, the ascendant is stronger. You see, I was born during the day, therefore my Leo features are less. But I can see a little bit of feline, lion in the eyes. I can see they're both fire signs. I can, when I look in the mirror, I see the frequency of fire. It's mystical. I see it in my eyes. You can't miss it. When you look into the eyes of an Aquarian or a Gemini or a Libran, you see that mental energy. You see that flickering of mental yeah, thought. They're always thinking. You can see it. It's, it's a frequency. Mm -hmm. Only through astrology you can understand all things. When you look at the eyes of a watery sign, Pisces, uh, Cancer, Scorpio, you see the oceans, you see compassion, you see the blue frequency, energy of water, you know, the mother. The earth signs, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, there you see that rustic, <laughs> grounded, knowledge-based individual, you know, the practical... Oh, that's stubborn, yeah. It's also not a stubborn. It can be stubborn, yeah. But each each element is stubborn. It's how they are stubborn. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. you hear a lot of astrologers say, "Oh, Aryans are very this and that. All the signs are this and that. It's how they are this and that." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aries is compassionate. So is Taurus. So is uh, Gemini. Uh, they they're all materialistic. They're all, but they're in different degrees yeah. and, and have different ways of doing certain things. So this is what has to be understood. Unless we understand this 12-ness of uh, nature, we'll always be in positive, negative, positive, negative, girl boy, girl boy, girl boy. It'll always be a rut and limited. And the mental evolution of mankind will always be retarded i always think that if we would only know <clears throat> who who we are what influences uh, we have that we will get over many many problems and communication with other yep with yep. other people because some people think that their character is like this because of because it's just like that but but this this is not uh, we are we we also as a life being has um, we are influenced by by many many different frequencies in different time of periods of time if we would only know this uh, that that's why ancient teaching always teach us to to go go into yourself to first first of all you have to know yourself then you can know other people if you lo love yourself then you can love other people Yes, brother. And how can you know yourself if you don't know your astrological chart, if you don't know mm -hmm. your energetic constitution and how you are configured? See, I, I explained to you and described my nature by astrology. You can see my Aries sun, mm -hmm. that iron-like uh, angular energy that I have. Sometimes I, I think I scare people, especially with, and then, and then my Leo rising, I see my heart getting very, sometimes brutal, like a roaring lion, sometimes compassionate, like the lamb and, and the good, and, and the shepherd, the fisher of men. But I, I can see that ascendant always, the Leo sign interacting in my personality. The, the rising sign is the personality. Mm -hmm. The sun sign is the individuality, together with the moon sign. Only one acts, the other reacts. Reflective, your reflective nature. So my reflective nature is Piscean. When I react to a situation, I react with watery, ambiguous fish to fish. So my emotions will be... It's changing. Yes, I, I realise this. I realize yes, so it. So one day I will do a pre an interview with confidence because mm -hmm. my positive Pisces fish will be really po Another day I won't have confidence. Yeah. And that's because my emotional nature is unbalanced by the fish, depending on where the moon is, depending on what aspects are yeah. happening to my Pisces sign. Day to day, my moods and my emotions go according 
to the fish. Unfortunately, in many ways, <clears throat> unfortunately, it destabilizes my emotional nature, having a Pisces moon. On the other hand, <clears throat> it has positive, positive things uh, as well, and which I love. But um, see how I explained and described myself through astrology. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's so, very important. It's very useful. That's I know for sure that it's very, very useful to know other people also. Uh, that that you can you, the people would wouldn't judge so much. That's right. That's right. And so I I believe that we are missing a great percentage of reality by not knowing astrology. Yes, oh, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, you <clears throat> today. I uh, met someone who was clearly a Geminian. Gemini people are very, uh, very airy. You can see this electric way they move their hands and their communication. It's Community. very nervous. Mm. What's your sign? Uh, Aquarius, Zodiac. Ah, you're Aquarian. Aquarius, yeah. W which day? 22nd January. 22nd of January. First degrees. When's your son? First degree? Second? Uh, first. Yeah. Okay, so you're on the cusp as well. All right, well, Aquarius is pretty similar mentally, you know, it's, a, it's an air sign, it's mental, air it's sign, spiritual. Yeah. That's, why so, you, that's why there's information and uh, getting back into the, to dig the knowledge that's also connected to, to, to Aquarius. Not everybody, of course, but uh, but that's for me to be like a, a banit, yeah, or against the law was from the beginning, yeah. Because many people, many astrologers, says they are Aquarian and uh, like revolutionary people, but uh, this is a lot of true about this. If if yeah. I feel that there's something wrong, that's that's if I believe this, I will go this way. Not like somebody tell me be uh, against the law because of like this. Is if if you feel if you see the real knowledge that is against, then I will fight with this. Yeah, yeah. So today, the the guy at the shop that I met, um, when I asked him, he said he was Gemini, and I I could see it, <laughs> and and so. It's, it's very re rewarding. It's very pleasing when you can do this. Um, here's a very good illustration of how tropical is um, superior to um, Jyotish when it comes to the body. Yes. And pretty very much cool. only in that area, I think. Um, tropical, I was in an Indian restaurant here where I live. I live in, um, on the Sunshine Coast in uh, Queensland. And I go to a, a, a restaurant called Kali, an Indian restaurant. I know the owners now uh, in Noosa, just 10 minutes from my house. And uh, I love to go there and, and get some Indian food. And um, the first time I, I went there, I uh, got to meet the owner, Nitin. You can see pictures of him. If you go to Kali restaurant, Indian restaurant, Noosa, mm -hmm. Sunshine Coast, um, you'll see pictures of Nitin and his wife, uh, Arati. He is Aries, she is Libra. And I guessed their signs on the, the first time I met them. And he interact, he's Indian. He uh, interacted with me on the tropical language. He didn't interact uh, with Jyotish, Vedic astrology. So when I, when I was talking to him, I met him, I said, you're Aryan, aren't you? He goes, yes, how did you know this? And I said, oh, I can see it, I can see it on your face and in your eyes. And I said, well, what day? He said, 21st of March. Mm. And then I looked to his, he introduced me to his wife and she was a little bit more difficult. You see, when you, when you are asked to guess the sign, then 
you start to doubt, you start to fear because you want to give glory to astrology. You know, you don't want to be, a, a, you know, un, unable. So what I do when I find it difficult is I say, look, just give me five minutes. Let's, let's talk. Just give me a few minutes because it has to come to me. I have to see something. And so what I did is I put three uh, signs forward. She had very strong Capricorn features. And she had another one I don't remember now. And then Libra. So it, it was Libra. And um, she was impressed. And the reason I told her that I had to put three forward is because I'm sure I can see the ascendant and the moon as well. You know, so I, sometimes it, it works like that. Often, I've guessed their ascendant and they say, ha ha, gotcha. I'm, I'm not a Sagittarian, I'm a Scorpio. And I say, okay. So I'll get my, uh, <clears throat> my smartphone out. And I say, just give me your details when you're born, the hour. And I punch it in and turn it around. And the rising sign will be Sagittarius. The sun sign is Scorpio. And I say that I'm looking at your sun, your rising sign, sister. And I see Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. And uh, astrology wins again. It wins again and again and again and again. It never fails. Astrology never fails. It's, it's a language. Yes. And people say, do you believe in astrology? I say, no, nope. I know astrology. Yes. I don't believe in English. Yeah, they, I believe, know. they won't believe it's so common because uh, like, there, is, there is no basic knowledge in this school and everywhere, actually. There is some kind of uh, uh, predictions, but this is, you know, from, from nothing. Yeah, based on not mathematics, no calculation, just, just feelings. But uh, what do you think, uh, what is my uh, ascendant or bonsai? What do you think, in your opinion, how your impression? Uh, Gemini. Ascendant? Yeah. No. Do you know? Gemini, no. You know? Ascendant, uh, my ascendant is uh, uh, Virgo in Western astrology. Mm -hmm. Stop there, stop, stop. Virgo. What I'm seeing, both Gemini and Virgo are ruled by Mercury, the hermaphrodite. Mm -hmm. And so it's a twin. Gemini is a twin. Virgo is a twin. Oh. So is Sagittarius, so is Pisces. Anyone who has that in their rising sign, they have, uh, your, your nose gives it away. Um, I can see as it dips down and curls under, yeah, that is pure Virgo or Gemini, Mercury feature. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the, I, am, I, know, I know what you mean exactly because some similar signs have the same ruler, yeah? Uh, yeah. And this ruler actually influenced not sign, but the, the ruler of the sign. That, that's, that's, uh... Yep, yep. So that nose that I'm describing, it's definitely, were you born during the day or at night? At uh, night. Yeah, so your ascendant is strong. Yeah, definitely Gemini, uh, Gemini Mer uh, Virgo, mm -hmm. Mercury energy coming through for sure. See Bob Dylan's nose there? Uh-huh. Which one is it? Gemini. This, this on the left? Uh -huh. Yeah, Bob, there he is. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me just put his nose in. Anyway, if you look at his nose, you see yes, that yes, same, yes, yes. yeah, and in Virgo, in Virgo, you have a similar thing, I think. But also, also there is information that Aquarius. Uh... I'm seeing a few of those, uh, you know, it's like a, a little bit of a contorted nose. It's got its own peculiar, <laughs> thing, you know, especially that dick. Yeah. But anyway, when also, you cover Aquarius that... Aquarius also has this, prob uh, not the problem, it but... Does. It does. Yes. yes. No, but yeah. Aquarius has a little point. Mm -hmm. You don't have an Aquarius typical nose. Let me show you Aquarius nose. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, have a look... 
Yeah, it does. It, it is a bit like yours, but it's more like a little square tip on the end yes, of the nose. Yes, yes. Nice. So, but there is an Aquarian nose a little bit like yours as well. Mm -hmm. But I, when you when you study this book, and by the way, you can get I it love on my book. Yeah, it's very good. Well, to, we're going to have the um, the guy who wrote it on the show with us. Yes. So he, Bill Schreib will be joining Bill us. Schreib, yeah. know we should we should have today this interview with Bill, but. Uh, uh, he couldn't do this, so we do tomorrow. Dance of the yep. Zodiac. Brilliant book. So, um, you can get this book on my website, Universal Truth School, and all the money goes to Bill. It has been for the last eight years. I, I never get a cent from it. I just, because I love him so much, and I love this book so much. Uh, 20 bucks, I think, or 30, I don't know. It's worth it. This is a, uh, a treasure. There is information at the start which describes the sine wave. It, just, it explains astrology as yes. energy. It's just amazing. I, I can't believe the guy put this together. Uh, it's the best book for being, in, being empowered to read the signs, to see it in the body shapes, to mm -hmm. see it in, uh, in um, the way they walk, the way they speak, uh, to look for the element. Yeah, you know, this, is it, uh, that's, is that's very important. Airy or fiery, to look for the planet. I can see, sometimes I see Mars, I see iron all over the individual, or copper, I see this beautiful copper glow of Venus. Uh, you can see it. <laughs> you can see these things. And once you get a little bit of knowledge, understanding the beautiful language of, of energy and science that astrology is, mm -hmm. then you're off. You've mastered uh, the universe in terms of do you know uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger, his jaw, like typical lion, very strong, very strong. Yeah, yes, it's uh, like a, the, the square block head and then yes, the strong yes. jaw. That if, if he would put his lion hair, just like uh, in Photoshop, it's a typical lion face. Is he <laughs> a Leo? Jaw. Is he a Leo? Leo, 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 yeah. He's a, uh -huh, really? he's, I'll tell you now, uh, he's... 30th of July, 1947. Yep. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you can see that chest. The Leo is, rules the heart. They're, they're prominent chest, you know. Yeah. It's all out. He always presents this, <laughs> this yeah. chest. Always. Sometimes they can be a little bit arrogant, you know, but sometimes they can be proud and, and dignified. Sometimes very passionate. They're just almost unruly, doing things from the heart. Ah, oh, let's party. Seeking and getting the limelight. He bought Some at don't... one o'clock at night, One twenty. What's that? Uh, 1 a.m., One twenty a.m. Okay, so his rising sign must be very strong as well. What's his rising sign? This is in Vedic, uh, in Taurus. Uh, uh, in Ta Taurus, it could be Gemini Taurus, yeah? Something like this. Ascendant. In Vedic, it shows Taurus ascendant. Okay, so it must be Gemini then. Gem no. it should, it can be I'll Gemini. pull it up. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow, difficult to spell that one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want his date? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pulling up oh, on okay, Astro okay. theme. Mm -hmm. I just want to see what his rising sign is because what? you can see the line for sure. What now, some of Leo's... Sorry? After that, I put the picture of, of this, uh, his face so everybody could see. Uh, yeah. Big influence of Leo. Yeah. Even the color of so, the... Oh, Cancer. He's got Cancer rising. A cancer rising. So, yeah, so his cancer rising will be like 60% and his Leo sun will be 40% in his, in his look. Uh, he's got a Capricorn moon. So once the, uh, if you're born at night, the sun sign is weaker. Okay, so mm -hmm. you have to give more, you have to look more for the rising sign. The rising sign stands out more. That's why my Aries, you see the long, prominent head all Aryans have prominent heads their heads you, you, 
your attention is drawn toward the head. With mm -hmm. a Taurian, it's drawn toward the mouth, the neck, the shoulders. With a Gemini, the chest, uh, well, more so the arms. Cancer's the chest. Leo is the torso, the, the heart, the spine, you know. the Virgo is the belly. You go straight to the belly. Your mm -hmm. eyes, your attention, there's the focus. Something draws. Where the sun is, it draws you there. And so... Arians, you can, see, you can see that my sun sign, being born during the day, 4.19 in the afternoon, uh, is stronger than the Leo. But I can see both. I know what to look for, and it's unmistakable. <laughs> okay, Santo. So uh, let's talk uh, uh, tomorrow with Bill Schreib uh, to analyze many people, many, many, uh, how to recognize, but th th this is, this knowledge could be very useful even for, for men who want to look the compatibility second half. This is very important because they don't need to ask the date of birth. They can see <laughs> many, many shapes, signals and colors. So that's, that would be very important. So once again, many, thank you very much for the interview and, uh, Let's wait for, for Bill to do the interview tomorrow for Dance of the Zodiac. How to recognize design. Okay. It could be very... All right. Well, thank you, brother. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Santo.